Hello everyone. Welcome back to SFDC Panther. My name is Amit Singh. In the previous video, we have talked about how to use Lightning Aura component inside Flow Builder inside our screen flow. In this video, we will talk about how to use Lightning Web component inside our Flow Builder. So before we start, please do like, share, subscribe the channel and also press the bell icon. So we will be using the same concept. We will be creating a LWC component where we will be using that risk text area input and then we will use that component over here inside our lightning uh, inside our screen flow to do that what we will do is if you are a developer you already know that how to create a lightning web component if you are an admin what you need to do is uh, you need to install the vs code there uh, there are some set of steps that you need to perform i will give you the link in the description so that you can perform those steps and then you can just uh, come back here into the VS Code to create the Lightning Web component. So to create a Lightning Web component, what you have to do is just use Control Shift P if you are in Windows, and Command Shift P if you are in uh, your Mac window, and then click on this Create Lightning Web component. If you don't see that, you need to search for LWC. You will find Create Lightning Web component. Select that, and then give the name here. You can say that Rex Text Area Component, and then hit Enter. It will ask you the location, select that, and it will run some sort of command and it will create a component for you. Okay, this is a risk text area component. Then, here, what we have to do is we just need to click on this JavaScript file and then go to this meta XML file. First thing, make sure that this is exposed, it's set to true so that you can use this component in your uh, Lightning app builders as well as in your flows. And then what you have to do is just give the master label, okay? And then for master label, what you will say is we will say it is going to be the rich text area component, and this is the value which we will be able to see in our flow. And then we can also put the description if you want to. If you don't want to put the description, you can just leave as it is. So I'll just go ahead and put the description, and I will give the name same, which is the so uh, giving us that rich text area component. Up to here. We have to ex we have exposed, but still our component is not available in the flows. To do that, what you have to do is you have to use a target. Okay, so we'll say that LWC hyphen target. These are the shortcut I'm getting. I'm using a extension that is why I'm getting, and that extension is a Salesforce LWC short keys. Go ahead and select those. What we need is that ex, uh, that target name is lightning underscore underscore flow screens. Okay, so this is what we need to use under the target. We can have multiple targets. That is why it says that first define the plural label and then define each and every single target that you have. Now your component is visible to the flow builder. Next thing, what you need to do is go to this HTML file. Then here search for LWC colon input or you can search for LWC colon rich text area. This is again with the help of that SART keys. Okay, we don't need the format. We'll just remove that. As we've talked in the previous video to display the label, we have to use label visible. So we will say that label visible is true. Then we will have some label. Okay, so we'll say that. Okay, just go ahead and select label and then we will get that label dynamically. Then placeholder as well. Up to here, we are okay. Next thing, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are binding the value with the variable called value, label with a variable called label, and placeholder with a variable called placeholder, so that every single thing can be dynamic, like previous video that we have done. Then you wanted to make sure it is required or not. You can just say that okay, make make it as required. But if you make it as required, it will not work like that. Okay. So let's quickly be like this. So let's say we can say, okay, it is going to be required. And then we will say it required. Again, it is going to have a variable which will say that it is required. So we have got four, four variables like previous video. Now we have to use these pro, four variables, right? So what we will do is click on this HTML, go to JavaScript file. And this time you have to create four variables. So those four variables are you have got placeholder, then you have got value, label, and then you have required. These are the four variables that you have, right? But again, if you wanted to take the input 
and you wanted to send the value from your component to the lightning web component oh, sorry from your lightning web component to the screen flow what you have to do is you have to make these variable at the rate api in a table so if you make these at the rate api that means these are the public variables that can be accessible outside of this component when you use api you have to import the api on the top in the import statement okay again you have make this variable as a public but still these variables are not visible i will show you after deploying this component what we will do is we will just go ahead right click and we will select deploy this source to org okay after deploying this i will show you that we are able to see the component but we are not able to see these values after even after making these values as a public so as you can see here i have just deployed my component which is rich text area component uh, get back to the flow which we have created in the previous video we are going to use the same flow so what we will do is after refreshing this flow okay uh, we will edit that screen flow this is our opportunity so we'll say that okay add this opportunity screen flow or what we can do is we can add one more screen if you want so just go ahead and click on this plus and say screen and label we will say that rich text lwc and here what we will find is we will find our component which is our custom component you can see here this is what we have given as a description or oh, sorry description not master label this is rich text area component okay and we can say that okay lwc rich text and then click on done then what you need to do is just go ahead and click on save as select a new version and click on save because we have activated the previous version so we will not be able to make the changes there now if you want to test this you can just go ahead quickly uh, debug this and even before uh, that debug is opening if you try to edit this and you try to select this component there is nothing you see here there is no variable which is saying that okay take the input from me okay so we'll say okay there is nothing now here what we will do is we'll just run it and you can find here let's say quickly put uh, put anything for the values we don't uh, need to save okay because there is a mediator screen so record will not be created click on next you can see here this is how your uh, okay it is saying that composed text whatever we have given okay the label it is giving us but we haven't given anything you can see here this rest text area along with the images which is working fine okay so our rest text area is working fine but we what we have to do is we have to get those values and if say that anything whatever we are putting whatever the value we are putting we will not be able to see that value you see here output is null input is nothing in this is screen which says that rich text area okay so now what we will do is we will get back to our L, uh, our vs code then we will get back to our uh, metadata and here what we have to do is we have to tell we have to tell our component that these are some variables that you can take from the user whenever the component is used in our lightning app builder or in our flows so for that we will use lwc design attribute select that you can see here what is say the target configs the target config you can define multiple configs uh, config into one single config then tell the name of your target where you wanted to take the input we wanted to take the input there are four inputs okay then your name this name must be matched with the name that you have given over here so if it is a placeholder give the placeholder type is uh, text default is nothing okay label you can say that enter the placeholder okay similarly we will be having our value okay so we'll say that this is a value type is going to be of a string there is no default value and label we will say that uh, pass the value or we'll say that this will be used to accept the value from flow and uh, give the value from lwc so i have given say that this value will be used to accept the value from flow and vice versa then we have one more which is saying label so it is again going to be a type of uh, a string okay and label say that enter the lab uh, rich text label okay then we have one thing which says that required okay so we'll say that it is a required type is going to be boolean default let's make it as true then label we will say that 
either required or not. So these are the four variables that we have exposed, and these variables are the same that we have created with the help of at the rate API. If we make any variable without API and try to use here under target configuration, we will get the error. Now, after making those changes, just go ahead and deploy the change. And then after we will see how we are able to get these values as an input inside the flow. So now we have deployed the updated code over here. We will get back to our flow. So here again in the flow, we have to refresh this page because we have just updated our code. Now here in this screen flow, we have to edit this. So just select this and click on edit element. Select your component. This time you see here, right? Either required or not, we say that by default it will be true. That's why it is taking as a true value. Then placeholder, we can say that enter your content here. Then you can say enter the label. So we will say that let's quickly make it as opportunity description. And then it says that, okay, uh, where is that? This is our value. This is used to accept the value from the flow and vice versa. So if we want to send some value to LWC, that will display over here. Or if we change anything in the LWC, we will see here in this value. Okay. Then click on, then just click on done. Again, save this. After saving this, again, we will debug to see what values are, uh, what values we are getting and how this is actually working. So again, provide whatever the random values that we wanted to provide for the required fields. So this time it says that opportunity description, it is also required, right? If I put anything, whatever the random text I'm putting, I click on next. I'm getting this message the opportunity has been created and if you see here in your uh, what we are get, getting this rich text area component okay so you say that we have got uh, input it says that label whatever we have got output we got label is this placeholder is this and required is this the value is, is still not here we are not able to get that value okay so now what we have to do is one thing that you have seen here is again if you go to the previous and then uh, try to remove there is nothing if you click on next it is still not giving us any error right so what we have to do is we have to use some flow libraries so that we can validate the input and display the error to do that just navigate to lightning component library and search for flow and then under lightning web component select flow support okay this is what we need and then you can see these are some variables that you have got over here so to do uh, first thing that we have to do is we have to import these values in our lightning web component so let's quickly import this just copy the same and paste over here right this is what we have got flow attribute change event flow navigation next event because next and there are more as well if you if you see here you've got next then you have got pause and then you have got previous and you have got uh, those as well so we will have all these Let's quickly say finish and then this is back as well so this is what we have to import and we have just imported now if you remember in the previous video we have used a method called validate we have used a variable in our lightning or a component so here what we have to do is we have to use a method called add validate okay this is the method which basically executes whenever you try to validate you try to click on next or those that api the method must be at the right api it should be like this okay now if you scroll down here itself uh, here on the below what you say here it is handle go next you can just do that but if you go to the specification uh, it, it is not having here so if you try to find out a validate there is no example okay i have done this i'll just uh, let you uh, like i will show you here i have a code so i'll just quickly navigate there so here what we have to do is we have already imported right now these are all the values that we have got then there is one more message we can say that value is required basically what message we will display so this is the variable we will not annotate at the rate api so we will say okay the variable says that required message value is required for this field okay then this is for uh, making the value as a false or true that required you don't need to worry about that this part then handle change event this is very important why this is important because whenever you are putting anything we must need to assign that value to the value attribute that we have created if we don't assign that is why we were not able to see any value for the outcome 
related to the value attribute. So we have to put that over here. So let's quickly have that. And then this on change should be here inside our lightning rich text input. Okay. So we'll say that on change, whatever the variable, the method we have created is handle change. So whatever we will be typing here, we will be assigning to the value. Okay. And next, what we have is we have these all these methods handle go or whatever we have got. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and copy this. And then after I will explain you each and every method. So what we have here is we have all these methods at the rate API handle go next handle go finish. So what actually we are doing is we are dispatching these events, right? Flow, pause, next, finish, and back. So whenever we are clicking on those, these methods are basically listening those events. And then we are just dispatching whatever the event we have got from here, whatever we have imported, right? So we have got those. We don't need to worry about these. Even if you want to remove these, you can just go ahead and remove. This is something uh, advanced label we'll talk in later videos. We need to check this validation, right? So what we have is this validate method, which is API provided by Salesforce flow. Then we have another method which says that if this is true, that means is valid is true. Okay. If that method returns true, then we need to send that the valid is true. Otherwise, what we will return is the same thing that we have written in the previous video is valid and our error message. So that is what and this validate what is does is it says that if there is nothing in the value, it says that this dot validity is false. Okay. Okay. This is something that we have to say here. We will say, okay, validity. There is one more variable that we will create. It is going to be say that our input is not valid. And then what we are checking is if there is nothing in this value, then make that as a false and then return it. Okay. By default, we will say it is true because that is what we are doing. If no, no value, then make it as false. Otherwise, make it as true. Let's quickly say here. And then we have to deploy this. This time, what will happen? We will see the required message. We will see the value as an outcome. And we will be able to use that value as outcome. And in the meantime, it is deploying. We can just go there, modify our component. This rich text, uh, this flow, we will add one here a screen element. And we will say that output from rich text area. And then here what we will have is we will have a display text and then this display text will display whatever the output is. So from where we will find is we have got the flow which says that okay rich text LWC okay. And then what we need is we need value from there. So we will select value and this is what we need. And then we will go ahead and click on done. Now we have got that screen. We will just go ahead and save this because there is nothing else we need to modify here in the flow. Now you have done. Let's see if our deployment has been completed. Yes, it is. So what we have to do is come back here and modify this. Sorry, not modify. We have to debug this. So provide the values to the first screen Then click on next. You got the second screen. Try to click on next. You got this error. Right. We are saying this value is required for the field. Then we will say that. OK, this is simple text. And then we will have some styling as well. We'll say that style one or two or whatever we want. This is what we are getting here. Now, if you click on next, we have one screen which will display the outcome. You can see here we are able to see we are able to display the outcome, whatever we are getting from there. And as soon as I click on next, the record will be created that opportunity record. I don't want to get that record to be created. Now here on the right hand side, if you see this uh, flow has been started. First screen says that opportunity information we don't need. Second screen says that okay, you have got rich text LWC. You have given these as an input, and that component has given you these as an outcome, as an output. And you also have implemented that required variables as well. Okay. And then if you click, you get that error. Not you get that record created. This is it for this video on uh, seeing how to use lightning web component inside your flows there could be various scenarios where you might use flow or you might use lwc inside flow some of them we will talk in the coming video thank you for your time and uh, in the next video we will talk about how to display the path element inside our lightning flow